right, Allen Iverson is on the left wing. The first rule of defense, you got to stop the ball. Well, the Lakers do that, but they're outnumbered because the Sixers have, turn, have forced a turnover. And what happens? Who is left wide open? This guy right over here on the wing. Allen Iverson, the leading scorer in the league, the MVP. He runs the floor, as does three other teammates. They outnumber him, and Aaron McKee makes a great decision. He finds his partner, and he knocks in the open three. That's why when you run that fast break, Marv, the more guys you can get out storming that floor, you force the defense to stop the basketball. Somebody's going to get a good shot that time. It was Iverson. Allen Iverson, who yesterday celebrated his 26th birthday. Day after his 48 points in 52 minutes. Sixth highest scoring game in NBA Finals history. Both teams 9 for 24 from the field in the first quarter. The Lakers up 25-24. Snow and Iverson in the backcourt. Bell up front with McCullough and Geiger. And a foul on the Lakers. It's on Teron Lee, a Lou who just uh, checked in. Well, it's Lou now trying to shadow Iverson like he did in game one. Allen Iverson said he was holding me in game one. Well, that time he was <laughs> holding me, and he gets called for the personal foul. Ron Lou, one of the heroes for the Lakers in game number one. What a move by Eric Snow going high off glass for his first field goal. You know, Mark, when there's a sign of rust or when your conditioning is down, you turn the basketball over. Game one, the Lakers turned over 19 times. Tonight, only one. They're sharper. You can see it. The 76ers' defense is still the same, but the Laker offense is much crisper right now. They're taking care of the basketball. Todd McCullough picks up his second foul to Kempe Matumbo, sitting down after collecting his second late in the first quarter. Well, Larry Brown patched a front line together here with uh, Matumbo, getting the rest along with Hill. Nice jump up by O'Neal. So Shaq, three or four from the field, he has seven, and the Lakers have a one-point lead. Marty, you make a great point. How much time can Larry Brown buy from Matumbo? How close can they stay so he does not get in foul trouble tonight? McCullough deep in the post against O'Neal. He was waved off by Roger Bell. Here's Snow in a crowd. Lost it. So you're looking at a six of front line of Todd McCullough, Matt Geiger, and Roger Bell. Shaw throwing that lob. Bryant trying to draw the foul. This is Roger Bell leading Todd McCullough. When you take a bad shot, the 76ers are going to run back at you. Kobe took a difficult shot. Phil Jackson not happy with that. And the Sixers right back down the floor and laying the ball in the basket. That's how they're winning this game right now. Todd McCullough, seven-footer with excellent hands. Second-round draft pick last year by way of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. The hustle by Orr. Iverson on the ball. Iverson putting moves on Shaw, setting up the fadeaway. Oh, uh oh. Allen Iverson with a gorgeous behind the back maneuver. He has nine points, and you sense he is getting into it. He put on so many moves there, Brian Shaw couldn't even react. <laughs> I flinched twice. I did too. Oh, nice setup. Robin Ory with his first field goal. And the Sixers now lead 30 to 29. And McCullough doesn't have the foot speed to stay with Ori. He's been beat on an offensive rebound and a cut. Larry Brown's going to have to keep his eye on that matchup. Here's Geiger. The wrong look for Kobe Bryant. O'Neal on the offensive glass. With a ball fake by Shaq. Roger Bell did a nice defensive job the other night against Kobe Bryant. Bell with it. McCullough beats the Lakers down court. You don't have to be fast to run on a fast break. That's two for McCullough. You just have to want to be able to run the floor. Sometimes you won't get it, but when you do, you deliver. That's great play by McCullough. And this crowd started to get impatient. The Lakers are down by three after losing game one in overtime. And, Marv, this is all that series of moves. Brian Shaw said, where is he? 
Iverson steps back, hits a very difficult shot on the fast break. And then Todd McCullough, probably if you'd run a foot race, he might not be able to beat you or I, Marv, but you know what? Well, he's running the floor, and he's got two layups, and as a result, his team leads by three. These aerial pictures, courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California. Goodyear currently operates six airships, three in the U.S., two in Europe, one in South America. But you knew all that, Doug. <laughs> yeah. Sixers have taken a three-point lead. Allen Iverson continues to question why no foul calls on the physical play on the part of the Lakers. I'm not going to see everything, all right? They have so we're gonna time. Oh, yeah. oh. That's all I want. Yeah, but why are you, why are you like, no, we can, I'm telling you, if I see something's a foul, I'm going to blow the whistle, all right? I'm just trying to say, stay in your game, I'll stay in the mine, let's go. I'm in right? my game, Steve. I'm, I'm, in trying, fouls, to, I'm trying to be in the mine, too. I want to try to make every call right. I'm not going to be right, unfortunately, 100% of the time. All right, just understand why I'm smacking in my face. I will. Okay. You I got it. Such a rational explanation from the official, Steve well, Javi. What you can see is Derek Fisher is using the one hand and trying to get it in Iverson's face to disrupt his vision. Iverson said, you know what, I've been hit three times now. Please watch it. Iverson. Yes. And Teron Lou was all over him. A series of crossovers setting up the shot for Iverson, who now has 11, and the Sixers lead by five. Offensive foul. Rick Fox pushing out, picks up his third. Larry Brown loves to front in front of the uh, low post with his defense, but Allen Iverson on this play, that little pullback, he takes the ball between his legs to create distance, and he's hit two very difficult shots in a row. Starting to get that look on his face of why he was the MVP. This guy has got so much energy. Kobe Bryant has made his return 0 for 3 from the field. Uh, in the second quarter. McKee for McCullough. And he draws the foul. And Todd McCullough has emerged as a presence for the Sixers here in the second quarter as Matt Geiger did back in game one. Well, we talked about the bench scoring. It was 29 to 15 in game one, plus 14 for the 76ers. You can already see what Todd McCullough has done in a seven minute period of time. He has four points. More importantly, the better he and Geiger play, it allows the Kimbe Matumbo to stay over on that bench with only two fouls. So this is critical time that the Sixers are getting this kind of production from their bench players. McCullough just a 64% free throw shooter during the regular season. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis? All right, Marv, thanks. You know we documented Aaron McKee's chip fracture in his ankle, but during the last time out, he had a heating pad on his left quadricep. I've been told by the trainers he has an actual strain. He's trying to play through it right now, but they're going to look at it again at halftime, and we'll follow up in the third quarter. Marv? All right, Lewis, uh, McKee remaining on the floor. Kevin Ollie has checked in for the first time in the... Sixers take a timeout off the pressure defense shown by the Lakers. 7.32 remaining. First half, and Philadelphia leads by four. Kobe Bryant has gotten off to an excellent start, but one thing the Lakers don't want him to do is get too anxious and too excited and start forcing shots. You can 